cares for me I'm just a dust blown in the wind How many ocean across but a little bit of your love Nevertheless I do the best I can I never found someone who loves me as I am Maybe I'm not ready for love I'm waiting for the day I meet you my baby I do the best Yes, I'll do the best I can, but I want to stay who I am. Stella! <laughs> Stella, bring on the beer. Steve. <clears throat> okay. What? You look fabulous. <laughs> What's going on between you and my cook, honey? I'm getting concerned. Is there some rivalry going on? Is well, there a vibration I need to let's know about? Let's take a night off from discussing your chef. I love you, honey. I love you. But, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> the, um, well, I love you too. Exactly, and I have- How come you're being so amorous? The depth of my feelings for you is really equal to the depth of my feelings for my own mother. And Steve, I want you to know that's that. Not the, no, 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 no. That's yes, not honey. what boys say to girls. Hmm? I think that I'm paying you a uh, incredibly no, I a know. heartfelt I compliment. You, I know, I think you mean it. I'm yes, I'm I do mean it. You. And your, your illusory jealousies and rivalries really have no pertinence to what is going on here. It's absolutely, strictly business. Insane. No, business. And that's all it is and all it's ever been. Okay. There's never been a dalliance. There's never been a misstep. There's never been an insinuation of any kind or sort. Well, you did tell me there was a dalliance once. Remember the red-headed <laughs> French girl? <laughs> <laughs> Look. <laughs> you can't tell a writer. I and, was aggressed. Oh, you, okay? oh I see. You, I was a victim of workplace harassment. I see. <laughs> and you didn't file charges. I once wrote a book, and I love the title. It's called The Bed You Lie In. The Bed You Lie In. And Sounds like a play on words. It was. And the thing is, I never wrote a book that was good enough for the title. But it seems like human beings as a class may have an issue, not just with reality, if there is reality, but how to communicate about it. That they, they lie and say, what kind of a day are you having? I feel great. But in the inside, they're well, that's a different really thing. kind of, well, that, that, but it's an example of what I mean, where in different contexts. Well, that's not lying, that's social discourse. People think mm -hmm. it's impolite to say, how was your day? Well, it was terrible. My this have, I, I discovered I owed seventy thousand dollars in taxes. That uh, people don't want to reveal that. Okay, so a couple's been going out for three months, and the girl says, "Do you love me?" And he says, "Yeah, I love you." Is that social discourse too? No, that's not. No? I mean, I think people in love are always lying. I'm, I'm working on this book that I had the idea when we were in Gloucester, 
Tell me more. Okay, so the first part is a woman who's in love with a man who's not in love with her. Put some color on it. Well, the first one is um, she has to understand that he doesn't really love her. And she keeps going, she keeps going for it. Finally, she gets over. So in the end, he's not there for her, so she has to face it. Okay. And then the second guy, she refuses to marry him. And when she refuses, even though she equivocates, they start to di disintegrate because she just can't bring herself to do it. And then the third one, I don't know what I'm doing with the third one yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It sounds like it's uh, quite a window into her interior life. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody gets it right, sort of. So it's kind of a study of that. And what do we think we want and what we don't want and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. so, that's, that's, um, what I, so that's what I'm doing. It may not work, who knows. George, I want you to sell a book for me. It doesn't really have a formal name. I'm calling it a triptych. Triptych? It's, it's three stories on love. All right. And there's not a feeling of loss of freedom for her? Because I know your books, no, freedom no. is a big part. The woman keeping her freedom is part of it. I know, that's true. But in this one, um, she's, she can only love a man who gives her freedom. OK. But does she pay a price for this? Because readers like to, like to see a price being paid, like to see some suffering. Oh, there's plenty of suffering. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. The protagonist always seems to be looking for someone, some things she can't find in the person. Really? Like she's trying to, I don't know, tame a wild horse and can't do it. Yeah. Well... So is there some element of that I in this book, too? No, no, there's no taming of any horses. Okay. Mm -hmm. no. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I, I love your stuff. I would say it'll come to you in about four months. We're looking forward to it. Mira feels love for these avenues and streets she's traveled on for so many years and in so many different circumstances. Loving crazy, witty men who undid her, loving, loving men who made her feel regal, being intimate with her husband, the pals they were. All the assignments she was delivering or pressured by, the city of engagement, the city of conversations, the city of invention. She's dating a guy 17 years younger than she is, and he's smitten, like me. Like me with her, you mean? Like you are with I'm her? I'm also smitten with her, yeah. Yeah, like, like, like I am, does. like I am, yeah. Okay, yeah, like, like I, I am. am. Yeah. It's grabbing hold of the great lion's mane, and it's true, you, you go on a ride, and you can be eaten by the lion as you love somebody. Everybody wants to skip that part, but mm -hmm. you can't skip that part. And um, so, so you write, you're writing about that, and I, I love that you're doing that. I think I've told you, you know, when you're making a decision, even if you, a decision in life, if you think what's the most loving thing to do, you make right. the right decision. But if you think even in writing, what's the most open thing to do, it's the right thing to do. Uh. It's the same thing. Because what do I always say to you? The same thing, open, 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 open even though I have a hard time doing it myself. Good. Yeah, we have lobster pasta. Excellent. Lobster ravioli. Thank you so much. And I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that looks great, Sandra. Thank you. 
Paul. I'm so glad. Okay. No, um, how was your day? Oh, I had a wonderful day. Really enjoyed the city. Where, where have you been going? Steve took me out. Really? Yeah, we went to a few bars and had a wonderful time. That's good. I love the neighborhood. Darling, I had an appointment uptown. The, the bars were on the way, so I thought I killed two birds with one stone. That's all there was to it. Mm -hmm. and, and Steve, what is the meaning of this shirt? I've, ne I've never seen it before. Well, it's a jungly kind of shirt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. About wildlife and wild things. It kind of reminded me of when I visited Rwanda and uh, Kenya and the bush and the jungle and it's, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? Well, you were visiting with monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but uh, there's nothing like a fast-moving feline. Do you like to dance, Sandra? Yeah, I used, I used to be a professional dancer. Well, could you help me with the mambo? <laughs> I mean, I just went, when I tune up my mambo skills. Should we all go That's dancing? A, well, sure. That would I be mean, great. what do you think, Gay? Eh? I can't fucking believe that you're living with this blonde down here and I'm supposed to sit there and smile, which I did tonight, and like, oh, this is just great. Isn't this sweet that we went out for margaritas? Isn't this sweet that you went out to the bars together? I mean, look, I'm not blaming you for finding her cute, and I'm not blaming you for being attracted hey, to her. I told you. I I'm not blaming you, Steve. I'm not you, blaming Gay. you. Oh, yeah, you love me. You're, you're crazy jealous, you know? Mm. It's, a, it's a pathology, Gay. It's a form of pathology. Mm. Well, I don't know many women that could have their boyfriend living with some tall blonde that he's taking out drinking with him and he's living with her. I don't know many women that would find that like the most relaxing situation. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't find her sexy at all. Oh, you know, Steve. she seems erudite to me. She seems like some kind of academic. That's all, that's all she is seems to like it. An academic. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. What's academic about her? Everything. You Name can see thing. that she's studious. That she uh, studious. She um. She put. She she is what she is. You compartmentalize your life. I'm the bedroom chef. Then you have a chef that you live with. Bedroom right? chef. Yeah, but I'm. That's I, what you call yourself. Yeah, exactly. And then you have the other chef. I, she may move into the bedroom chef role for all I know. But the fact is, you. I mean, this is just like unbelievable. Hey, Why you have you... more in your little finger than she has in, in her entire. Head. Yeah, but there's the, no measurable cerebral activity Steve, going on she's there. She's the one you spend, you are living with, and you spend four nights a week with, and she gets dressed up like she's going to a cocktail party to serve you dinner. It's ridiculous. Forget uh, about it. I baby. think that she just doesn't have enough clothing. She's going to send for her oh, clothing from on, Canada, Gay. Steve. That's what's going on. I don't That's the why reality you think I have of it. The IQ of a mouse or something. I mean, it's just so stupid. All these rationalizations. Yes. I know nothing about her. Yeah. I don't even know. What her parents' name is, her address, or anything. You don't anything. know what my she, parents' She showed names up from Craigslist. Well, so what? Well, that's the what of it. Well, There's... you're sort of gaga. You're, you're looking, you're wearing this ridiculous shirt with her. I mean, I don't, is this supposed to mean that you're like virile? I don't mean, ridiculous like... about my shirt. Well, I mean, you never wore this what shirt you before. Mean? You have this special outfit for her. It's kind of funny. I mean, the whole thing is weird. Yay, yeah, this shirt made... is runway. What are you talking about? It's time It's time to move on. You're going to live with some blonde where you're goo goo and gaga and having drinks together. There's no goo goo. There's no gaga gay. Yeah. Was... It's, it's a figure of your imagination forget about it See, drop it it's I was there I was there I saw the way you're like light up 10,000 volts to be with her this is beginning to get me hot under the collar yeah well it's beginning to get me hot under the collar well just cool off take 10 really deep breaths and then exhale yeah well I should take 10 really deep steps and get out of the situation it's too painful Steve look it's gay I don't like these threats I don't like this menacing. I'm telling you where I stand and you're really acting cuckoo. I mean, at the end of the day, what I can say is, go jump in the lake.
Mira could search again for another man to be with, but she knows she won't meet someone she would love like she does him. She gets up and looks at herself in the mirror. She will be 66 her next birthday. She can't compete with the youth of a 31-year-old with long hair and long legs who provides him with dewy and provocative attention. Things are okay. I mean, we have fun going out and stuff like that. But I can't get past the chef thing. Yeah, I mean, you're always reading magazines. All these, these cats leave for, like, their open yeah. hair or their chef right. or whatever. They like being served. Especially an older guy. It's, it's love being yeah. served a nice meal and things like that. You know? Like, when I tell any man about Steve and the chef, they immediately say, he's sleeping with her. And, oh, then yeah. I, and I say, I don't think so. And they say, um, no. I'd be sleeping with her. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. My objection has always been just seeing him a few times a, a week. Mm -hmm. Because I really do think that, that that's a big statement from him. Yeah, well, he doesn't want intimacy. So you have to ask, do I? I mean, how yeah. come I put up with it? You're very busy. You're teaching all the time. You're writing all the time. It would be nice to be with somebody and not feel so, um, I don't know, so alone. I am alone with Steve. But I'm used to being alone. But I am alone with Steve. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, don't, I guess I'll bring it up with him. What else can I do? He'll deny it. That's what he likes to do. We were young once. That's what happens. They like these young women around to look at. It's like an old story. It's not so innocent as he likes to make out. Yeah, nobody would put up with it. I wouldn't put up with it either. Except I am putting up with it. Hey, Cesar. Good to see you. Come sit down. I read your pages. Totally fantastic. What does this mean? Every denial of a woman's instinct is a small cut. Or how do you interpret that? Well, it's the pain in your gut when you don't follow your instinct. Mm -hmm. And with my writing, I want to convey that it's, uh, it has long-lasting effects. It's not just in the moment. It, it scars your soul every time you do it. I absolutely admire in your work this female character that is just full of anger. And, um, you know, I think that men are so terrified of women's anger. Although I remember one time my ex-husband, I can't remember why I was so angry, and I knocked on his car window. I was waiting at a train station. He dropped me off and he rolled it down, and I just punched him in the nose. And to his credit, he didn't retaliate, but this whole thing of anger comes, I think, when women are stifled. The more you stifle a woman, the more she'll explode into a nuclear armament. Why do you put up with these idiots you go out with? Mira's father once asked her. What the hell do you want? She looked around the room desperately. It's not clear, she said. When I'm with someone, I often want to be alone. When I'm alone, I want to be with someone, so I make weird choices. Christ, he said, most people are like that. I'm frightened, she said. For me, the real lover might be ambivalence. Oh, he said, you're just in love with possibility. I was thinking that I want to come to Gloucester. I mean, I want to be there. I want to see you. I want to see the dog. I miss, I miss being with you. I miss, 
I, do, I just feel like being with somebody close. No, I'm not having problems with Steve. I just feel like, I just feel, I just feel like being close to somebody. So Amber, these pages are great. Thanks. In a way, nobody writes about sex better than you. I was remembering this whole time that I was relieved Eric was so gentle in bed, but it was right there in the journal. From the first night, I was disappointed that a man who was so domineering in life would be so gentle in bed. You write about that kind of passion, and it is rare. It's rare, actually. What, what you and Holland had, I've only had maybe twice in my life. How do you stay with your guy knowing yeah. that this other thing's out there? Well, because I have other stuff with him. I like his mind, and I like... I, and, and ultimately, I guess I'd rather have that than great sex. <laughs> She fumbles at it, a secret life of hers, the piano. She never stays with one piece long enough to get it right. But now Mira spends some nights wondering if there's time left to even try. I brought you a lobster roll. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah? I'm uh, pondering what my next move is. Are you going to be able to eat for the next week while you're waiting? You're going to have to go to Craigslist, run the same ad. A, they've got to be able to cook. B, they have to be reliable and dependable. Non-smoker. Non-argumentative. Non-confrontational. In one word, submissive. Uh, I see. Yeah. Um, you need somebody under 25. Um, it is true that generally the people that take this kind of work are in their 20s or 30s. Women? Preferably. Well, what if I apply? You. Gay, let's be serious. You've got a very important career. You're uh, people, in the midst of three or four ghostwriting jobs. And I think it would be uh, foolish and, and looking for trouble for you to try to tackle the demands of this job. It gets me that you have a home with them and you don't have a home with me. The one that left, she was so at home, she was half dressed as she was cooking. I've never seen help here uh, come upstairs half-dressed. On occasion, there have been Hungarians that have appeared in the kitchen barefoot, and I assumed that that was the way they uh, cooked in their kitchens in Budapest. Well, why, do you th why do you think the Cirque du Soleil dance were left like that? I'd like to know. I would like to know, was there an exchange of words between you and her? What did you do that was provocative? Did you push a plate onto the floor that she had to sweep up? Very funny. Why are you always wanting to keep us in separate domain? I wouldn't say that at all, Gay, but I think from a philosophical point of view, that defined uh, spacing, it makes us viable as a couple. So basically, we'll never be together. The word never was never cited. Okay? I never said never. I need serenity. You're very time-consuming, Gay. Especially when you start chirping. I know that young woman bothers you, but she's no threat to you, he said. Who else would get me and love me like you do? Who else would be so giving? Why would I give you up? Because she's blonde, she answered wryly. There is some merit to what you say, he said slowly, but not enough. Mira picked up her head. What did you say? You camouflage your feelings because you think you'll be hurt. Funny that, because she turned to face him and did exactly that. She camouflaged her feelings.
you. Um. <laughs> Gay, I've been thinking. I never really asked you how you feel about carrots. <laughs> carrots? Yeah. Do you like them? Well, then how about this one? Oh, it's beautiful. That's lovely, 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 Tim. Hmm. It symbolizes our love <laughs> for one another. It's an eternal symbol. So, did you find a new chef? Yes. She's from Bangkok, of all places. I've checked a number of her references. I'm gonna give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's moving in. Moving in. I mean, this is a position. We're not moving in for life. She's moving her gear to the quarters where such people stay so that she can better perform her duties. So we begin again with a new one. All of these people that work there come with an expiration date. Well, everybody comes with an expiration date. No, no. Speaking that existentially, some have stayed three years, four years. Ultimately, they all move on. As two girlfriends. Yeah. Gay. Let's not rehash that again. No, no, I'm just saying girlfriends do too. Well, okay. So. I like the food here. What about you? It's a cocktail ring, he said, handing it to her. You mean we're engaged to have cocktails? Mira asked, joking. Then she opened the box. It was beautiful. Green and blue stones, the color of tranquility. A ring, she said to herself. It's a way a man says, I love you. I want to keep you. But she remembered two nights before, they had been with a friend of his who'd given his girlfriend a ring for Valentine's. I know what that is, he said to his friend. A shut-up ring. This was the town where Mira had drunk with her father, sat in fishermen's bars with a fisherman leering at her at 14, drunk on vodka squirts in frosted glasses that the bartenders gave her in homage to her father, drunk on sea roses and the sound of the sea, drunk on her youth and her burgeoning beauty, drunk on the daily fog that burned off to festive blue skies and the sea that came in and out of eddies as if performing a sexual act. Um, Montevideo. <laughs> I'm at the Atlantis Inn. You're kidding me. And can you ask Bandit to come visit me? Yeah, he will, yeah. Bandit, you want to go see Auntie Gay? 
Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, ask, him, ask him if he can bring you with him. Yeah, I, I think he's going to need me to drive him. I'll be the chauffeur. Good daddy. Go for it. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on. This is awesome. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. It's your girlfriend. <laughs> he's gonna steal you away. What? Well, he is. Yeah. But, um, he's, he's possessive. He's prote- yeah, of you, of you. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Yes, everything's okay. But sometimes you gotta get out of dodge. Mira had forgotten how tall he was, how ready he was for something to happen how he could seemingly connect, communicate. He had been in reconnaissance in Vietnam and he liked to get a sense of the terrain. Of course he'd come right over. There would be action, whatever it would be. I had to meld a modern building with a, you know, a period stone house. Wow. What do you think, huh? Beautiful. Yeah, I designed all that. Wow. Look at this view, huh? No, I know. Spectacular. No. Oh, this ain't New York. <laughs> yeah, huh? It's amazing how you survived prison, and it's amazing how you rebuilt yourself after. And here you are, you went to prison for growing marijuana. Now it's legal everywhere. How does that make you feel? Just bad timing. Well, let's get back to you now. What are you doing here? And I just wanted to come and but, you know, see you... somebody that was grown up enough to have a relationship. And somebody who, you know, just, I don't know, be with you and kind of settle my soul down and see what... I mean, I got to change, too. But that's one of the reasons you're with Steve. What do you mean by that? Because he wanted to be with somebody that wouldn't force you into commitment yourself. That's what everybody says, but I'm not sure that's true. I, I know that it looks that way, smells that way, it, <laughs> it is tastes that way. That way. <laughs> it is that way. I don't think it is that way. No, it may not be Well, true. maybe not. Maybe you've... And maybe I've grown. I've yeah. grown, yeah. and... But you know what happens is when you grow, you're like a little unsure of yourself, and like, I'm trying to figure it out. What next? So, so I would say that you and I were the best relationship I had. So I thought I'd come to the horse's mouth and see, like... Well, I don't think I've, I've ever met anyone that knows me better than you. You, you understand me, and you... I think you appreciate the stuff that I appreciate about myself hmm. more than anyone. Really? I would think everybody could see that. No. I mean, because no, you're kind that. of extraordinary. I mean, mm. you're an war hero, then you go to prison, you're, you are supposed to win awards for sculpture. I mean, is there anything you can't do? I can't get you. <laughs> it's with you, kid. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. But you want to be in a relationship, too. I do, yeah. Huh? Yeah, because I think that's healthy, don't you? You're in a relationship with Steve. <laughs> Is that healthy? It's good for writing. That's right. So it's, it's like a, you don't have to dive in. Dive in. Yeah. But on another level, if you don't dive in, in a way you, you're only going so far, you never really... You don't get wet. You got to get wet. Mm-hmm. But do you really want to get wet? You were as close as I got to diving in, and then I pulled out of the pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. Okay, so why? Why? Great question. Um, I was. All I knew was myself independent and alone. And I didn't know who I would be if I wasn't independent and alone. Well, do you think you dive in easily? Are you a good diver? I'm probably a good diver, but not a good swimmer. (laughs) (laughs) You got to stop moving out of Steve's life and moving in mine. Okay. But, uh, you know, I have to give up stuff too, you know? Yeah, like about 10 women, probably. No, no, but I, you know, I have a relationship with one woman that I have to give up. Do you want to be with somebody that doesn't know who the hell you are? You're, you're amazing, you know? You got the purest heart I've ever seen. 
You've got, you know, brains, you're autistic. I think you're going to make the first move. I can make the first move? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can trust you. Because? You've roughhoused me before. Oh. Yeah, you have. you got to face the facts. I'm sorry, you know? Big Daddy. I know. Yeah. So, I have to be good. You got to be better than good. <laughs> you have to, you have to jump. <laughs> We're not getting any younger. Mm. Wow. Pretty here, huh? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Totally gorgeous. Do you remember coming here before? Of course. Yeah, this is like your spot. So I was thinking about your girlfriend situation. Yeah. Well, what's she like? I mean. You've at least met Steve. You you know he's certified. Mm -hmm. You know what he's like. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to know? <laughs> I want information. Well, I want to see what my competition is like. Well, um, what's she like? Well, it's the well, one part about her that she knows how to be in a relationship. So it sounds pretty good. Well, I mean, there's always differences, you know, like, I mean, for example, is she artistic? No, which, which is difficult because she doesn't, you know, you're incredibly artistic and we have a, a mutual understanding and such, and we can look at something and, you know, and or feel something that someone that doesn't, isn't artistic can't. So we, it, we, it, we can't, I can't share that with her, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? She puts up with my in insanity yeah. to a great degree. You know, I mean... Um, like what? How, how are you insane? Well, um, uh, relentless yeah. when I do something and she just puts up with it. You know, I, I, I probably haven't told you that, but we're living together. No, you didn't tell me that. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. I figured you might be living with someone because, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't see you at night. Well, I mean, you know, I, don't I mean, it's okay. I mean, I understand that. I didn't think you were. I mean, I mean, you're a very attractive man. Why wouldn't you? Be? You must have been a hunted species here when you were alone. Well, you know, you were. You didn't give me any answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You wouldn't open up. I know. No, I'm not mad. I'm just. I'm just, um... We should be together. Yes, I have a girlfriend, he said. Well, okay, maybe she does live with me. Well, okay, maybe I've told her I love her and will never leave her. Maybe I did tell her she's the only one for me. Maybe her heart does revolve around me. Maybe I did say there would never be another woman. I don't see what that has to do with it. I'll have water. Thank I'm, you. I'm gonna have a tea with milk. Tea with milk. Sure. I hear from your mom and dad that you're you're like knocking it out of the park athletically, intellectually, no. in every single way. Yes, yes, yes. It's I hear stressful. that. Yeah, but it is stressful. But now that you're 16, are you knocking it out of the park with guys? Yes. No. Mm -hmm. I did guest prom though. You did? Mm -hmm. There's a girl mm -hmm. who's getting married. She's a scene. She's getting married already. So people still get married? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> what? What about me? What about you? Oh, well. Do you want to get married? What? Do I want to get married? Cute. With Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to get married, but um, I was just told, as a matter of fact, today that I'm too impossible to get married. Oh. <laughs> that I'm too... Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'm very good at this uh, romance thing. I think that, you know, I came to Gloucester as a kid with my dad, and we spent all our time in the bars. Mm -hmm. And my mother took off when I was four. So I'm like not the most trusting, conventional, mm -hmm. loving type. At this late date, mm -hmm. I want to become more in the box. Mm -hmm. The monster's here. Hey. <laughs> 
Mm. Look great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. How big daddy. Where'd you steal that dress? <laughs> Who gave you that? Did, what? did Steve give you that? No. No. Um, no. Big daddy. Yes. So guess what? Give me a kiss. Mm. So what do you think, Big Daddy? I think so now you I can... think that <coughs> What? Let's mess up this bed. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. We we're gonna watch mess a movie. We're gonna mess mm -hmm. this bed up. Do you think you can handle this? No. No? Not at all. It's great to have you in my arms again. I know, it's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a long, long time. We could try again, he said. Mira smiled, sat back quietly and listened. Listening for a man is seduction. She knows that. You mean I would be your mistress? After all, Mira thought, she is more suited to it. She has never been a Hera, but a latter-day Aphrodite. She would be doing what she's always done, never the bride, but the bedmate. She touched his arm gently, smelled his aftershave as he leaned in. Well, he asked, what's the answer? Doesn't he know mistresses never tell? Never tell that they would like to be so much more? I think we'll do a Grey Goose Rocks. Here's to you, Honey Bunch. Mm -hmm. Just look at you, kid. I, I keep... I keep thinking, you know, that... that um, oh, here it comes. I can, well, yeah. I can, I, I can, yeah, I can well, feel I, it right now. What? Go ahead. So I feel a little bit that um, uh, that we're up to no good. You're gonna find a fucking excuse any way you can. How are you gonna feel if you leave here today, mm. right? And we never get together. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, um... It's going to be like a big piece of us is gone. Yeah. Right. That you can never recapture, because I'm not going to go through this again. You've got to get into this more than, than just... No, I know. But that's going to put you in a very weird position. I'm willing to take that chance. It's worth it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I have trouble, as you say, diving into murky waters. You're not that murky. You're scared. Mm-hmm. 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 We'll start this out slow. We'll meet in Hartford. We'll have dinner, da-da-da-da. And I, I think it's just a question of you getting used to it. I'm going to get used to you living with someone else. If I see that this is going to really happen, then I will remo mm -hmm. remove myself from that situation and then... But you know that um, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to... To, um, mm -hmm. to commit. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Intellectually, I don't feel like it's hard for me to commit, but I, my track record speaks differently. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 So, so I mean, so, it is that I love you. I just am um, thinking we are not You know what? Behaving. You know what? I'm telling you right now. I'm fucking done with this. I cannot deal with this anymore. Your fickleness of us saying, yes, I want this, I don't want this. I'm freaking done. You gotta act or you don't, and you don't, you're not gonna act. I can't trust it. I'm done. Mira didn't know why she said she wouldn't meet him again. 
She would have loved to meet him again. Why did she sit there and let him walk out of her life like that? She'd done that so many times, encouraged men to walk away from her. It was almost the only thing she knew how to do. about the streets of New York is that even if you are walking nowhere, you are walking somewhere. The drivenness of the city, a legal narcotic. Nobody knows if it is enjoyable, but it becomes absolutely integral and necessary. To stop feels like to die. It's so beautiful here. I know. Yes. Now tell me, how was Gloucester? Mm. Mm. It's so beautiful. Right? I saw Big Daddy. Yeah. And I spent time with him. I don't know if I made a mistake in not being with him. I don't know. But maybe I did. And um, he's, he takes this position that I have to open up, that I'm to blame for being alone, and mm. that I got to I gotta change my act and, as he puts it, say yes. Mm. It's so, life, generally. I yeah, mean, we'll say, say yes. Yeah. You meet a woman, you fall in love, you marry her, you live happily ever after. You marry her, you cheat on her. <laughs> and, 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 um, um, yeah. But you live happily before yeah. you cheat on her. And happily after you cheat on her. <laughs> I think, by the way, you have been opening yeah. up. Well, I mean, compared to I when you met me. I don't think that. I know that. Even in the last three or four years, hmm. you know, hmm. I see a huge difference. And, um, and I think that's where some of the pain is coming from. Mm -hmm. As you're willing to be more open you start to feel more, and you're feeling that loneliness more than you did three years ago. You talk about it more. Yeah. Well, I always, as you know, used to cheat. I, right. So I always had a lot going on, so... Right. You know, on to the... On to the... Yeah. Well, on to... On to... I don't know. On to something. I've stopped doing that. No. But he wants you to even be more out there taking some risk and making some changes, probably. Yeah, I mean, they... Here are the new releases. I was looking for a certain book, but I'm not seeing it yet. You found uh, something interesting? I have, I have. You know, I think you might like this book. What's the title? <laughs> um, on a summer afternoon. In Tuscany. <laughs> yeah, I'm very familiar with that book. I know. Congratulations. Well, you're, you. you're a wonderful writer. Whoa, I don't know what to do. I hope my buttons don't pop off here. Well, thank you. It's got great reviews, this book. Well, it's a year of my life, so I must have been committed. Yeah. I threw a lot of pages into the waste paper basket. I have this sign over, I use an old fashioned typewriter. I have a sign over my typewriter that says, two pages a day and no judgments. <laughs> and that's how I write a book. That's well, smart, it's smart. So what do you do? I write books too. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But mine are not as successful as yours, but. I don't want to hear in anything. In fact, most people don't. Mm -hmm. What's the title of one of your books? Uh, the Erotic Fire of the Unattainable. The Erotic Fire. Of the unattainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's enough for me. Yeah. I want to buy that book. <laughs> You're going to base it on the title. On the title. Okay. He approached her. 
this man that everyone admires, and she does, for his success. She's not used to such attentions. He writes of desire, it is his domain. He has made money, he has acquired fame. He makes it look simple. He even makes it simple to acquire her. Mira goes along with it, just to see, just to see if it is possible she is worth acquiring anymore. Yeah, no, I'd love to have lunch. But I, oh, wait a minute, I just, I just forgot. I can't, because I have students till two. Yeah, well, why don't I meet you for a walk? He called. Just doing that in itself was exciting. She's on someone's mind. He could have most women just for his name alone, but he called her. A door just opened. She's about to take an emotional ship somewhere new. All the electricity has just been turned on. So this is a place where I used to bring all my sons. They've, they've been the gifts that I wasn't entitled to, but got anyway. I love them in a way that I never loved anybody. You don't have any children? No. Mm -hmm. No. So mm -hmm. do you feel that you missed out on something? I'm sure I did miss out. I mean, mm -hmm. people are crazy about their kids. And I'm sort of alone, you know, I, I'm alone in the world, sort of one of those that I'll have to rely on the kindness of strangers. But I just couldn't do it. And actually, that's why my husband and I split up. He wanted a kid, and I, and I didn't. I mean, I, my mother left when I was very, very small. So um, I think that's probably the psychological reason. But then also, my husband was a bit of a kid. And also, we were poor. I'm an artist, I would have to work, write, raise a kid. Seems better for him to do it with someone else. And indeed it has been. Mira remembered when she was a young woman, a man had woven snapdragons and roses and poppies and daffodils around her bicycle handlebars in the very early morning. The man she now remembers is dead, that man who had taken such care to leave that sensitively constructed gift of beauty for her. He didn't leave a note, she remembers that too. Oh, for such poetry. I want to spend more time with you, but I want it to be kind of quality, open time where we can be very authentic with our desire. Okay. I'd like to think of the sexual experience as one of abandon. abandon. So you abandon yourself to it. I'm not particularly wild sexually. I mean, I was never like mm, in threesomes and on on window sills and stuff like that, but. I don't know, for me, sex is about the man. So, I know this is déclassé, but is there a Mrs. Jennings? There is a Mrs. Jennings. I might as well just put that out here on the table with the tomatoes. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about her, but there is one. I've only gone through this twice. Well, is Mrs. Jennings the third? You don't need to be ashamed. My father had three wives. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> All three of Mira's mother's husbands had been married when her mother met them, including her own father. 
All those men left their spouses for her mother. In her own case, married men made her nervous. When with them, she ended up dreaming of her mother. So how come you finally wrote me? Well, why shouldn't I? Well, looks like I can't stay away from you. You're catnip. I take that as a compliment, Gay. I, I think I've been a really constructive influence. I, I think of myself as your muse. <laughs> well, it's not about my writing, but... Although I did make you a character and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be a character. And <laughs> I've always been one. <laughs> His way of making love was to tell her that he was good for her. Mira didn't know how that kind of trait could be measured. He thinks he raises her productivity like she's a threshing machine. She doesn't work for him, so why would that matter to him? She realized he's a series of mazes that she has to travel down to find the current to the heart. It is the work of that that she loves. That is the productivity which interests her. Well, come on in, Gay. Can I get you something to drink? Okay, it's a magnificent rose spritzer. Thank you. I hope you like it. What are you looking at so intently? I'm looking at this. Tell me again everything. You can see the stars behind me, mm -hmm. which are in the exact configuration that they were in the night of my birth. Back on the horizon, behind me, you can see the pyramids, the Hindu Kush mountains in Afghanistan. And what about Spot? He sat for that? Oh, that wonderful dog. Look at his eyes. Yeah. Those eyes are alive. Yeah, and so are yours. No, I take that as a compliment. Yours are like, <laughs> yours are like staring off into infinity. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Well, your whole place is like that. It's like an exteriorization of your interior. Why does one body just pull you and one mind delight you, even if that mind infuriates you? They say that Winston Churchill had audacity. So does this man with his painting of himself over his fireplace, with his red apartment and toy soldiers everywhere, an audacity for play, for light and magical thinking, with colored glasses about that reflect the sun on his ceilings and objects everywhere that were with the wind. He lives on a pirate ship, a fun house, and Mira suddenly realizes she must have wanted to join the circus. Nice to see you again. So tell me about your personal life. What, what about your boyfriends? Have you had a lot of boyfriends? Well, I mean, I'm a woman of a certain age. I've had a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, I guess I have. Are you in a relationship now? I I'm in a relationship of a sort. I've never had a man before kind of not want to live together or take it further or whatever. Seems to me that when you love someone, you get strong. You get, you, you, you move, you. You want more. Well, you do braver things. You don't, you don't hold back. You kind of, you dive in. Yeah. He, yeah. And you're right. Right. When, when you love someone. So the fact that he holds back makes me think, wow, does he love me? Am I convenient? I don't know. Well, maybe it's just that you feel rejected. Maybe it's not a real rejection. He just wants his freedom, you know. 
I'm standing up for him. I'm his advocate. <laughs> well, yeah, the freedom. Yeah. I can never tell if I like the relationship or not because I like freedom. And I like that you like freedom. I think that's what's going to work here. Let's just keep this feeling, okay? Because when we do finally connect, it'll be great. You smell good. You look good. Your lips are great. So great. And I'm, I'm going to run to the restroom. Okay. Your husband's waiting for you outside. Okay. You know, you know, they, they just, he just said, your husband's waiting for you. It was so sweet, in a way. It was like, sort of like, I don't know. I, nobody ever says, your husband's waiting for you. There's something nice about that. Couldn't Why? you say, Rudolph Valentino is waiting <laughs> for you? Something like that. <laughs> And then there was another teacher, and it was kind of obvious, but he said, you have to be in time if you want to play with other people. And it seems that that's true, you know, in life, you know, if you want to play with people, you gotta, you gotta be in their time. Here you go, Etienne. Well, hey, thank you so much. Wow. Um, you're so lovely. <laughs> Steve, this is yeah. not how girls like men to be. I I hear you. I, it's uh, completely instinctive. It's nothing to do with you. Uh, it's the way I grew up. It's uh, just one of those kooky things. It's from a different age, a different epoch, when there was much less self-expression of uh, affectionate feelings. And thank God your feathers aren't ruffled by it, because you know there's nothing to it, right? Once Mira told a friend that her lover didn't like to kiss. The friend said, how can you get turned on then? That correlation had not occurred to her. There had been years when she too had not liked to kiss. But then that changed. She began to respect the tenderness of kissing, the sweetness of it, the intimacy of it. Everyone knows kissing is in some ways more intimate than sex. Would she end up cheating on her lover by finding someone to only kiss her? Within minutes, he leaned down to kiss her on the mouth, and Mira could feel her body heat up with desire. Then he began unbuttoning her blouse, gauging her breasts as art that he might want, and then inquisitively took in her legs with his eyes as his hand traveled up between them. She found herself wet, wanting that urgency, and the funny part was she wasn't even sure she liked him, but she was attracted to his masculine sureness of what he wanted. And then he began saying, oh, cock and tits. And as she began to fondle him, and he was working her clitoris, and she could have come then just by that. But instead, he placed himself inside her, and soon they came together. I love you, he said. And she knew he didn't, and she thought it old-fashioned that he would think he had to say that. She said nothing. She could give her body, she thought, but she could not use words dishonestly. This is fantastic. You have scored big points with me with all these books, huh? This is the library of your life. But does it make up for the four flights of stairs? No, you still have work to do. <laughs> You're getting a little nervous, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just want to see what your skin feels like. Hmm. Skin's important. Mm -hmm. Smell, skin, senses. Mm -hmm. So you're pleasing my eyes, and now you're pleasing my fingertips. Mm. 
Oh my God. Oh, oh, I need to sit up a little bit here. Turn me on. This is good. My hunch was right. I knew Quiet within voice. the first 17 seconds in that bookshop. <laughs> so I'm thinking you brought me up here to kill me. <laughs> like a queen bee. Yeah. Huh? Worst ways to go. You're not in the will yet. Forget about it. But don't expect me to go for a second inning here. <laughs> so... <sighs> we seem to be working well together. I have a permanent hotel suite in Montreal. In Montreal? Isn't that where you're from? That is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I only get up there maybe two or three times a year for a week at a time. So my, my deal is this. Why don't you move up there for most of the year? Ah, oh, me alone, isolated in Montreal. It'll be good. It'll be great, actually, for both of us. Um, sounds like something would be better in a book. What a fool she is. One man is married and turns out to be a bore. Another hides a girlfriend. Another has meals with his help, not her. Hasn't she ever heard of being with someone available? When the hell is she gonna take a risk? What is she so frightened of? Or does she think creativity is making what looks impossible possible? If so, then what she's made impossible is her own life. Okay about having this party for the plants? Okay. Sure, I'm okay. Why not? I like a big party. I'm an extrovert. Let's do it. True, true. And you went over the guest list? I surveilled the, the guest list. Uh, of course, I know most of the names. And let's be candid. It varies from ossified to calcified. <laughs> Uh, there could be even a section for Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal. Nevertheless, it's a great guest list, even if aged. As you may have noticed on the margins, I made some annotations of some additional names that I think would be additive. Why do you need 10 young women at the party? I just don't want it to be like a mortuary night of the living dead let's have some young people there that come in skimpy outfits and like to dance and it's going to be fine and let's not be molecular and use our microscopes to look at every single molecule of I don't, I don't know why these people that are coming with their wives need to have young women there look hey, i don't want to keep going around in circles about a subject that is really a rectangle. There's the geometry of what you're talking about is completely off center. They're just people I thought I would like to invite to give the evening a little edge. If we continue talking about this, I'm gonna get hot. I implore you, let's change the subject. You mean you don't want to talk about it? That's it, Kate. I guess you don't. <clears throat> After you have a fight, Mira thought, you think maybe you were wrong. Why did I make an issue of this or that? Was it really that important? 
Funny how when our lovers walk away from us, we become a four-year-old abandoned on the street. Who will love us? Who will take our hand? What do we do now, all alone in the world? Yay! You looking forward to the book? Yeah. Any day now. Any day now? Any day. Yeah. yeah. But you seem a little... A little chagrined. What, what's up? Um... I'm... I, I had a... No, nothing. I just... You know, I have trouble sometimes with boys, as you know. I just had a fight with Steve the other day. Oh. And, um... And, um... Yeah, and I'm trying not to have an affair with a playboy. And that's it. Hmm. Well, write about it. Only solution, King George. Yes. Only solution. I'm sorry about our fight, Steve. It was a misunderstanding. I I'm sorry. Forgive me. Maybe, maybe it's because I work a lot. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you work is uh, your lifeblood. It's yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's the thing that really is the essence of your life. I, we can't blame it on work. You okay. can't. Well. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then I, I mean, I'm, I'm also giving up this whole thing of thinking, you know, we have to live together and all that stuff. I've got, I sort of, you know, I used to, I used to, as you know, I took it as rejection. So now I, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm growing up at this late age. Mm. I want you to know that I am poignantly disappointed that I was drawn into the fight, and I oh, well, give all you human. a all thousand human. apologies. We'll accept it, but we're all human. You have more in your little finger than any of those other women ever had in their entire anatomies. You're uppermost in my thoughts constantly. Back at you. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? back at you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, he often didn't know what it was she wanted. Yes, he sometimes sounded like he was rote. Yes, he could not leave his comfort zone in love, and we all must leave our comfort zone in love. But the Torah says it is good to see the person beneath the facade. And maybe that was enough, and maybe it wasn't. you to know I have really deep feelings towards you. I'm thinking about you constantly. Mm. And you never kick me at night. You know? That's a huge plus right there. I love you more than the Canadian Tundra. Wow. That's intriguing, but at the same time, a little disappointing. Can I get a Canadian sunset instead? No. No. <laughs> Why did Mira say she loved him more than the Canadian tundra? Not a standard romantic expression. The Canadian tundra is empty, large, and cold. She must have been saying she loved him without the claustrophobia of trees. So you have something for me? Yes, George. Hey, so, 
Does she get the right guy? Page 270, you'll find Page out. Page 270? What's next? Well, I don't know what's next yet. It's been soon. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta find a new subject. Maybe for your next work, you could write about guys like me. Do a little flirting with me for field work. With you? Call me devious, but you don't understand that all I am is a little mysterious. I have no other cause ready in 